Everything in the world is made up of tiny little particles which are too small to see, atoms and molecules. You are, I am, and so is the water in this cup. Now, if you could see the molecules of water in that cup, they would look something like this. Each molecule of water would have one fairly big atom, oxygen, and two small atoms, hydrogen, H2O, H2O. And one drop of water would contain billions of those molecules. They're fairly simple molecules, but some molecules are quite complicated. And I'm thinking in particular of plastic materials. This canoe is made of plastic, so is that life jacket, and so is this table, and most of the things on the table. Now, plastics are artificial products. They're not found in nature. However, rubber is found in nature, and plastics have similar kinds of molecules to rubber. But although plastics are artificial, the materials from which they're originally made are found in nature. For example, cotton is the starting product for some sort of plastic. So is wood, sulfur, limestone, also salt. Some plastics start out their life as natural gas, coal, oil, or even water and many other rocks and minerals. And the first thing to do is from those raw materials to make fairly simple molecules called monomers. Now here's a model of monomers. You might say they look like paper clips to me. They are, but they represent fairly complicated molecules called monomers, but not too complicated. In order to make those separate little molecules, monomers, into molecules of plastic, you have to link them together. Something like changing separate paper clips into a chain of paper clips. The chain represents a very special sort of molecule called a polymer, which means many parts. Monomer means just one part. In order to change monomers into a polymer, you need another chemical that makes it all happen. That's called a catalyst. Now, you might be saying, this sounds terribly, terribly complicated. Do you know what? You've probably already made plastics in the workshop or in the kitchen without even knowing it. For example, if you've used a glue that contains two parts, a glue such as araldite. The clear one, in this case, is the monomer, and the yellowy coloured fluid is the catalyst. When you squeeze the tube, the two liquids come out, there they are together, and already a reaction is starting to take place. The separate little molecules, the monomer, are starting to link together. And if you stir those two parts around, you have a fluid that already starts to feel a bit thicker than it was before. And if you use that as a glue, and I've put a few drops of it on the end of this hammer handle and placed a metal chain in that blob. I did that about 10 minutes ago. Look what's happened already. That blob has turned into solid, hard plastic, which is now strong enough to bond the metal to the wood and lift up quite a heavy hammer. Right? So all glues of that type are really plastics. In fact, if you think of a plastics molecule or a polymer molecule as a linkage of pegs like this, you can think of why they have some properties. Because some plastics will bend or twist. Even though they're very strong, you can bend or twist the bits and pieces. It's a bit like the separate parts moving backwards and forwards. That's also why rubber can stretch and go back again, because it has separate bits and pieces that can move in relation to one another. All right, let's make another kind of plastic. Perhaps in the hardware store, you've seen plastic putty, such as this tube here. Now, I've squeezed some out into this little container. By the way, that container is simply a cut-down disposable cup. It's easy to uh, use the things in, and also I can get rid of it afterwards. The reason I'm wearing rubber gloves is because these chemicals are poisonous, and I don't want to get any on my skin. Now, you might say, well, it doesn't look much like plastic. It just looks like gooey, purpley brown stuff. That's the monomer. Now, to turn it into a plastic, to turn it into a polymer, we need to squeeze a little bit of the other tube. This is the catalyst. It's actually called hardener on the tube, but you and I know that it's really a catalyst. Just a small amount of this, only about a tenth as much. There we are. Squeeze it into the monomer, and then stir them together. And immediately you start stirring them together, the reaction is taking place, and you might see a colour change. Starting with that purpley-brown colour, it's already becoming a lighter colour, pinky colour, and eventually, within a few minutes, that'll turn to a greeny-grey colour. Now, that's a plastic, and you can mould it, you can change it into various shapes, you can use it for repairing objects that are made of plastic or even stone or metal or anything you like, or, if you want to, you can cast something. For example, if you take a coin and drop it into that and then press it in, 
already the plastic is starting starting to harden around that coin. While that's hardening, let's have a look at one other kind of plastic. In this can, I have something called polyurethane, another plastic, polymer. And if I press the lever here, I can squeeze some of that into a disposable cup. And it comes out looking for all the world like cream or ice cream. But within a few minutes, that will harden to form polyurethane plastic. That's the plastic that's used to make surfboards, it's used for furniture, and it's also used for insulation in houses. And it becomes quite solid, although there are millions of little air bubbles trapped inside. That's why it's such a good insulator. Well, you might say, how is our coin going? Well, that one will take some time to harden, but here's one that I put together yesterday. I can now tear the plastic cup away take out my little blob of plastic and get the coin out of the way and I'll have a perfect cast of that coin in plastic. There we are there, a cast of a one dollar coin. And you can clean it up, sandpaper it and colour it if you wish. Casting is just one method for making plastic objects. See how many others you can find out about.